Hey everyone, I'm back again and today I've got a message for you which has been sparked from many of the conversations that I've been having recently. So really want to dive into this one with you guys all about, you know, really diving into a lot of people being alone in their lives right now or in the wrong relationships right now. Um, this is a really key one for everybody who is ultimately wanting to you know, not just get stuck in settling in our relationships and in our lives, but actually reach for what we're capable of achieving. And sometimes in life, we have to be willing to go it alone in order to stand in our highest potential in our future. So I'm going to dive into this one. Um, you know, you guys know what my favorite topic is all the way back here again. How did we get here? Oh, again, back to relationships. Um, so as always, I'd love to hear from you guys as we go through and kind of make this a conversation that we're co-creating together um, rather than me just talking at you. I love getting to connect with you guys. So share with me, um, you know, your experience with today's topic or any questions or comments or words of wisdom that you want to share with us all, um, or just say hi and let me know where in the world you're tuning in from um, and anything that you'd like to share and contribute is always awesome. So I'll dive into the topic today and then um, I'll get to all of your comments. And uh, yeah, that's my highlight. That's my favorite bit. So um, we will dive in. So Firstly, I want to ask you guys, have you ever had the experience of being really lonely, but surrounded by other people? Maybe that might be in a friendship group. Maybe that might be in an intimate relationship. Maybe that might be in your family. Maybe that might be in your workplace. Wherever that um, particular place is, um, doesn't matter, but just the question really is, have you ever felt totally alone, even though you've been surrounded by people? And the other question that I have, so drop me a comment and let me know if that's happened for you. I can certainly attest to that in my own life. And also what I want to know from you guys as well is I want to know, have you ever felt um, more alive when you're not even surrounded by other human beings? Like, have you felt more connected than ever, um, but not actually been in the presence of other people? All right, so I really wanna hear from you guys um, in regards to those, because today, um, today's message is gonna be all on this. Like, it's the amount of people that I've been connecting with who are either really like spending all their time and energy and effort, like really trying to find the one, the relationship, or um, they actually have this kind of um, dynamic going on in their lives where they're with um, an intimate partner, you know, who may have been, you know, the love of their life at one point, but no longer is. And they're just kind of staying in, you know, the, the logistical kind of um, way of being in a relationship. You know, they're not actually creating intimacy and depth and connection and enhancing each other's lives, you know, the purpose of intimate relationship or growing together. But what they're really doing is just kind of like, oh, they're in business together or, you know, they have the same house or they've got kids or they, you know, it's the, the financial aspect is just too challenging for them to part ways or whatever it is, right? But um, if you're anything like me, um, and I'm guessing you might be if you watch a video like this, then you, you're somebody who like can't stand to not reach your own potential. And it's very difficult to watch other people sell themselves short as well in their lives, right? Like we've only got so many heartbeats and so many breaths to have in this existence. It's really important every single day to ask and question yourself as to what are you spending your breaths and your heartbeats on every single day? And like your intimate relationship or your relationships with your family or your friendships or your business relationships, wherever you're dealing with people on a consistent basis, like 
You should really ask yourself like whether those people are making you feel more connected, giving you opportunity to grow and expand. Um, that, that sometimes comes in the form of challenge. We want people in our lives who can challenge us. It's not just all about love and support and, and kindness. It's, it's about everything. But you've got to look at the dynamic and go, is this connection something I am actually just settling in that's costing me my fulfillment and my sense of connection? Um, or is it something that is actually enhancing my life through whatever avenue, through love, support, challenge? Um, you know, it's, it's giving me an opportunity for growth to understand more about myself and, you know, or have a team or whatever it is. You in your heart of hearts know um, whether or not a relationship dynamic is enhancing your life or subtracting from your fulfillment, all right? So that's really what today's message is all about. So it's all about, you know, being alone is better than wishing you were alone. And now take that from me. I'm somebody who's been a massive extrovert to the point where when I was a kid and growing up, I had to be around people all the time, right? Like I never wanted to be by myself. It didn't matter what we were doing or where we were going or anything. I just had to be around other people. And to the point, even when I was, um, you know, at school and studying, like I'd like make my mum, like, um, you know, do her cleaning or whatever she was doing or, you know, working on her things or whatever. I'd make her like, can you just do it like in the same room as me? So I've got that kind of connection to something, you know, to somebody outside of me, right? And basically, um, what I've learned, I, who I am today, like, it's just so black and white compared to who I was back then. Because right now in my life, um, I it's the first time ever I've legitimately, like, lived by myself, right? Like, I've had different periods of time where I live, you know, a couple of weeks here or a week there and I'm, I'm by myself. Or you guys who've been following me for a little while know I went traveling um, over Europe for a few months and there was uh, I only probably got about three weeks by myself actually it was supposed to be three months but people ended up coming coming with me right um, but but who I am now like I was um, just visiting my beautiful auntie last night and spending some time with her and I was having a conversation with her and I said you know what like she's actually just starting to live by herself for the first time in her whole life. Um, you know, her husband, my uncle, passed away a few years ago and um, she was living with, you know, her son and his partner and now they've kind of taken off in a new direction and this is going to be her very first time in her life that she's going to be living by herself. And we were actually just like sharing stories about like, how much we were like loving it, right? Like, and it was just so crazy to have this conversation because um, like I said, you know, for me where I've come from and always had to have either a best friend or an intimate relationship my whole life, you know, long-term relationships, always in one, always, right? And, um, and, you know, over these last three years, it's been a bit, that, you know, I've just come out of a long-term relationship back in March, right before, you know, my, most of the craziness kind of took place here. And honestly, like to get to this point where I'm living quite an introverted life, to be honest, right? And, um, and I know most of the population is with everything going on and we're in lockdown and all this sort of stuff. But, but basically this, um, period of my life right now is so empowering and I'm really um, realizing when I reflect back how much of my sense of identity was used to be connected to the people in my life and I never selected them intentionally. I always just kind of, you know, was selected by the external world and that felt good. Like, oh, they like me and that, that makes me feel like we've got some harmony and some connection. And I was never selective consciously about who I was having in my life. And, you know, basically selecting the right quality of people on your life's journey is if it's not the most important, 
thing or um, act that you can do on your journey in order to create self-fulfillment, it's definitely up there, right? It's maybe not the number one one. There's more things that you can be doing in your relationship with yourself, but it's almost like the second most ever important thing that you can do for yourself in order to make sure that you create self-fulfillment in your life is who are you selecting, right? Who are you inviting into your um, sphere, right? Because at the end of the day, that will make or break you, who you surround yourself with. And we've, we've heard from the greats over the years about this, you know, the Jim Rohn quote, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. You know, there's been different studies about this, happiness studies, and a lot of it comes down to the quality of our relationships. And it's definitely, here's where the, where the, the difference is and the challenge is in most people's lives. They believe that they have to have people's people in their lives, right? They have the intimate relationship. Okay. It's all good, right? If they have the group of friends, okay, it's all good, but they miss the point in the quality of the selection of those people. Because if you are with the wrong people, it is a hell of a lot worse than being alone, being without any people, right? And let me like ask yourself, like, have you had this experience in your life? Have you selected the wrong people or have you, you know, been in relationship with the wrong people and had the experience of just, you know, like your life is not your own. You lose yourself in that relationship. You, you feel like there's always some sort of problem or issue and it's, draining your energy away from what inspires you or moving the needle forward in different areas of your life or affecting your health mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. You know, um, I've definitely had these experiences and it really hasn't been until those moments in my life where I have separated out of dynamics that have been, you know, challenging that I've got this different perspective. You know, I'm always advising people to, um, if you've got a current challenge in your life, take yourself out of the environment that you're usually in, you know, the environment that's got the problem in it, so that you can like ultimately get a different perspective. Sometimes that means taking yourself out of a situation physically, you know, like if you're in, int in an intimate relationship and you need to have more perspective because when you're in it, you just kind of lose yourself. I, I invite people to go and like take a trip by yourself, get yourself out of the, the um, environment, the physical environment that you're in. But what happens is when you take yourself out of a physical environment, it shifts your mental, emotional environment as well. Because we all have these different triggers in our environment. They might be to do with people. Um, they might be to do with um, places, memories, all these different things. So if you kind of take the lid off, you get to explore different solutions, you know, because we know that, you know, the same mindset that created your current set of problems isn't going to be the same mindset that's going to find the solution. You've got to shift gears. And sometimes that means getting out of your environment to do so. And there's different strategies and ways of going about that. But basically what it really comes down to in today's message is realizing that um, it's, you know, being alone is better than wishing you were alone. And there are too many people out there in the wrong intimate relationships, friendships, um, business relationship and dynamics, and, um, you know, spending time and uh, not not addressing issues in their family relationships as well, um, that are really costing their fulfillment. And, you know, people are too scared to go it alone. So they end up staying the same and they end up just kind of retreating from uh, life and just kind of checking out on the fact that they're not creating fulfillment and they're not really experiencing life as they could be. Life and love and connection and depth, like all that beautiful stuff, right? They're just kind of settling for mediocrity. And, you know, if we look at society as a whole, it's kind of the norm, right? Like that's kind of the normal thing to do. So these people who are choosing to do this, like they're just, they're just like looking around and that's how it goes, right? Like Joe down the street does that 
um, Mary over there is doing it, you know, my mum did it, my dad did it, my auntie did it, whoever did it, you know, whatever. And we're, we're learning or letting others guide us who haven't consciously directed their lives. And we don't really have enough role models out there for people to see, you know what, hey, Sally over there actually did something different. And like, she, she look at her life now. Like she had the courage to go it alone so that she could ultimately create what she wanted. You know, and, and a lot of people as well, I see this happening time and time again. And hate to admit it, I've definitely been guilty of this pattern in my past when I was pretty unconscious to life and my own choices, right? Before I knew anything about personal development or questioning why I do what I do, um, I definitely was guilty of, you know, staying longer in relationships than required or the, than was healthy until, you know, maybe something better comes along. But the challenge with this is, is that you miss the opportunities when you stay in um, or you don't even open up the opportunities available to you when you stay in the wrong dynamics in your life, the ones that, you know, make you wish you were alone. When you stay in those, you, uh, you're not ready for the opportunities that will present themselves, not just because they're physically, when they present themselves, like you're not, you're too caught up in this whole other dynamic. That's part of it. But the main reason why you're not ready is because if you're not happy within yourself, if you can't be alone and connected in your own presence, then you're, you're just trying to handball that responsibility of connection to some other soul, right? Some other imperfect soul who's on their own journey and we tend to tra attract our reciprocal. So they want to handball the responsibility of, you know, their sense of connection to you as well. So that's where we create that codependent connection, which isn't healthy. I've definitely been there a few times in my life as well, right? And so at the end of the day, if it scares you um, to be alone, even though you've identified that you wish you were, right, with the kind of people that you have currently got selected in your life, um, then that's exactly what you need to do, all right? So you need to have the courage to go it alone so that you can ultimately create the quality and the depth of connection that would live up to your potential as a human being and stop settling for mediocre, you know, just low level, surface level connections where you kind of feel like you have to just protect yourself and you're at war a lot of the time, you know, for connection or respect or anything, you know, because that is absolutely no way at all to live, all right? So take it from somebody who's been there multiple, multiple times. I've definitely lived out, you know, I've been in long-term relationships, intimate relationships since I was 16 years old, right? You know, I've, I've had a fair few years of, you know, um, you know, they've tended to be about two to five year long relationships. And um, I've learned a lot of lessons the most challenging way, which is to dive straight into the practicality of relationship. And, you know, over since 2013, I've been um, deep diving on the theory and applying the theory uh, in the practical of relationship. And I by no means have totally made it. You know, I've got the whole rest of my life to, to navigate this. But the reason why I spend so much energy and time and attention and focus on studying it and diving into it is because I really do believe that it's your relationships and in particular your intimate relationships that create um, the greatest vehicle for your growth and your fulfillment if you get it right, if you master it, right? And so there's a lot of value in addressing our relationship dynamics. So really hope that this has served you. Um, I definitely want to check in with you guys. Um, so see who's been able to join me. So drop me some comments. Let me know where in the world you're tuning in from. Before I rush off into a group coaching session with the Limitless Potential Academy, which I cannot wait in a few minutes. So uh, let me check in. I've got Roxana in the house. Awesome. And Jamie, hello to you. Love the love that you share with the group. And Juan from Sao Paulo, Brazil. I love it. Good to have you back. And uh, Jose, hello to you. Good to see you as always. And Jon's here and Jeff. 
and uh, Brandon and Chris, uh, Christian and Bill, hello to you and Tristan, hello to you and Sharat and Kay and Patty, awesome to see each and every one of you guys. And Bill, as your level of awareness and self love increase, the more you enjoy me time. Absolutely. Uh, you have to cut loose people who are dragging you down. Uh, they don't come up to your level of awareness. They drag onto um, that. You they drag onto their drama. Mm, it's fine. You just don't have to be present while they work things out. I love that, Bill. And spoken with such wisdom from experience, I can absolutely tell. Um, and yeah, you know, it's the hard truth. But you know, at some point in your life, you have to stop being the rescuer. I know a lot of you who listen to these messages um, fall into the trap of rescuing or wanting to help and support and rescue people in your lives and sometimes people just don't want to break out of being the victim in their own lives and get stuck in the drama like Bill says right and so if you want to break free of the drama you have to empower yourself by making the difficult and challenging decisions to go it alone in uncertainty so that you can ultimately create what you want so such wise words there Bill so grateful for you to share them and uh, Jerry's here as well, and uh, Ashu, Ashutosh, good to have you, and Victoria, and uh, hello to you, Jerry. And uh, Patty, can you recommend a good book on relationships? Great question. The best book ever. Just start with this one. I make everybody read this one. It's called Loveability by Robert Holden. Because at the end of the day, this is all about your sense of lovability. Because look, I started this game as a relationship coach. And what I found was over the first few years of doing relationship coaching with couples, right? Um, what I found was it didn't matter the tips, tools, strategies, techniques that you give somebody um, in the dynamic of intimate relationship. If they don't have a really great fulfilling relationship within themselves or at least working towards that, it, those techniques and tools just go out the window. So it all starts with you. Your relationship with yourself is the greatest tool you can ever help, have, hope to have in your tool belt, a self-loving relationship um, if you want to create um, a really empowered uh, intimate relationship or friendship or any other relationship with other, another human being. Robert Holden, lovability. I've said it a million times. I'll say it a million more. And um, I hope that you all give that a go. And I so appreciate the question, Patty. Um, got tons of books. So if you've read that one, let me know. I'll recommend something else. Um, but that is foundational. So, so appreciate that. And uh, Josie's here as well. Patty, you're so welcome. So I've really got to rush off. I've got a couple of minutes to get set up um, for my group coaching session, like I said, with the amazing Limitless Potential Seekers in the Academy. So um, what I just want to leave you with is to just make sure that you are living a life where you go out there and you just be totally live authentically, right? Live authentically you know, love deeply, don't stay stuck on the surface and ultimately contribute to others meaningfully. Make your heartbeats matter, make those breaths you take matter. You've only got this one life right here, right now. So stop settling, be willing to go it alone and no, you don't have to. Get a good group of and community of people who are making the same challenging decisions as you are. That's what I do in the Limitless Potential Academy. It's an incredible community um, where we study the depths of the stuff that really matters and we apply it to our lives and we support and challenge each other to reach for our potential. It's a beautiful community. If you'd love to be part of it, you can definitely join us um, so you can reach out to me for that. So awesome. And Bill, go get them. I will. Thank you so much to everybody who could join me today. You are so appreciated. I really love what you share and contribute and uh, for just checking in and spending your time here. I'm very grateful for you and I cannot wait to see you guys tomorrow. Much love.